Hello and welcome to In The Lab. Now today we are going to be burning food, which is a little bit different, but I know you like things that burn, so I'm sure you'll like this experiment. Now to start with, I'm going to show you a battery, because a battery has got inside it chemical energy. We can use this energy for our own benefit. Now a candle is exactly the same, different kinds of chemicals, but it's still chemical energy. And I can also show you something else. Our food, this amazing array here that we have, this has got chemical energy in as well. Again, it's different chemicals to a battery and a candle, but it's still chemical energy that we can use for our benefit. And your body effectively burns the food. It's not quite the same as setting it on fire, but it breaks it down, it releases the energy. Now the question is, how much energy do different kinds of food have? How can we work it out? Well, we've got an experiment over here and this is how we're going to do it. So I'm going to get some water and I'll put it into a measuring cylinder up to the mark where it says 20. That's 20 millilitres or 20 centimetres cubed. This water I'm going to put in the boiling tube. Then I'll take a measurement of the temperature with my thermometer. After that I'm going to take my tongs, I'll get some food and I'll burn it using the Bunsen burner. As soon as it's on fire, I'll put it underneath here and the energy released, the heat, will cause the water to increase in temperature. I'll wait until the whole thing has burnt up and we might still have something there, but all the energy will be released. Then I'll take another measurement using my thermometer and we'll be able to work out a change in temperature. Now, if the water goes up by a lot in terms of temperature, that means a lot of energy has been released. The food contained a lot of energy. If the temperature only goes up by a tiny amount, that means that that food contained a little bit of energy. Nice and simple. Now the only thing I'm going to change in this experiment is the type of food that we're going to burn. Everything else has to stay exactly the same. Anything else we could change about the experiment is called a variable because it varies. We're going to keep it the same, we're going to control it. That means that everything else about this experiment is called a control variable. So I'm just going to stop now and for a minute or two you can think, what are the things that I have to do that are exactly the same in the experiment? Remember, I'm changing the type of food. You've got to think about all the things I have to keep exactly the same. Then we'll see what I've come up with. So hopefully you have had a good think about some control variables, the things that could change but that we're going to keep exactly the same. I'm going to tell you what I came up with. The first thing is that the amount of water, the volume of water has to be exactly the same each time we burn something. If it wasn't, then I might put lots of water in and it would not go up by very much. If I didn't put very much water in, then all the energy would go into heating a tiny bit of water, it would go up a lot. It would make us think the wrong thing in terms of the results. I've got to use the same volume of water every time, so it's a fair test, so the results can be compared with each other. The next thing I have to do is make sure that when I'm burning food, I hold it at the same distance under the boiling tube, because if I hold it really close, then all the energy is going to actually go into the water and if I hold it really far, a lot of it is going to be lost. If I hold it somewhere here, then actually it's a fair test. Thinking about it, I am going to want to get as close as I possibly can, but I have to make sure I'm always at that same distance. Whatever distance I choose, it's got to be the same and I think I will go closer. The last thing that I can think of, and you might have thought of more if you did, well done, but the last thing is the amount of food the mass of the food has got to be the same. If I use a huge chunk of one food and a tiny chunk of another, it's not a fair comparison. So either I could use the scales that I've got here, and I could measure, I could weigh the mass, and I could make sure that I've got the same mass every time, or I could take whatever lump I have and then scale it up to 100 grams. So if I pick up something that's 50 grams, I could double the result and get it for 100 grams. Why would I do that? Well, if you have a look at a packet of crisps, I'm going to come right close to the camera now. You might be able to see here that it always says on the back of your food, typical values per 
100 grams. And the people who've made your food have actually done this experiment already. They've worked out the energy that you would get if you had 100 grams of this food. So that's what they do with all foods. They scale it up to 100 grams. We're going to do the same. Pretty much the same types of experiments. A little bit more basic, but the same as what people do to work out all the important values of your food. So let's get started. As I've got the crisps, we will begin with crisps in a moment. We have got the Bunsen burner going. We are ready to do the experiment. I've already measured out 20 centimetres cubed. Remember, it's got to be the same amount every time, so it's a fair result. I'm going to pour this very carefully right into the boiling tube. And I'm going to show you a little table that I have got here. I'm going to make a note for each of the types of food of the starting temperature, the final temperature, then I can work out the change in temperature. As I said, I need to weigh it, I need to get the mass of the food, and from that I can work out what would the temperature change be if I had 100 grams of that food. And that will be the most useful thing to know. Because if we get a high value, a high temperature change, we'll know that that food will be good for giving us a lot of energy very quickly. If we get a low value, then it might taste nice, but it won't give us very much energy. So let's have a look. I will first need to weigh it. So I'm going to get my balance. I'm going to use a weighing boat. And I can tell you, I don't know if you can see from there or not, but we have got a value of 0.73. Grams. Now that's not actually very much, is it? 0.73 grams. But at least we know what the value is. That's the important thing. I'm now going to hold this, and here's the fun part. Once I have got it to actually light, it is. We are losing some energy already because it is burning up. But once it's going to light on its own, I think I've got it lit on its own. I have. I can now hold this under there, and I know the starting temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. This water is now going to increase in temperature. It's not taking too long to burn, is it? And sometimes patience is needed in these experiments. As long as I keep it the same height underneath, then we're going to have a fair result, aren't we? As you can see, this crisp is releasing quite a lot of energy. It's burning on the desk. Unfortunately, we have lost that little bit. There was some energy in there. Experiments don't always go as planned, but that's okay. We're getting most of the energy from this crisp that we need. Well, it's gone out, but there's still more energy in that bit of crisp. So I'm going to try and burn it again. Because remember, to be a fair test, we need to get all the energy out of our sample that we can. It's burning again, so let's see if we can get all of it out. It's gone out again, so I'm going to try one more time. And I think we can get that last bit done. There we go, we're going to get the energy out of that final bit of crisp. And even now, I can be watching the temperature. I can tell you, the temperature of this water has gone up already. And there we go. All we're left with is carbon, the burnt bit that you get when you've lost the energy out of food. Now I'm going to take the reading very quickly. It has gone to 25 degrees. So I'm going to note down in my table that the starting temperature was 22. The final temperature was 25. That means the change in temperature is between 22 and 25, that's 3 degrees. So it went up by 3 degrees Celsius. Now I've got to see if I do it with Weetabix, with marshmallows, with biscuits, and also with pasta, what the temperature changes. Is it more than 3? Is it less than 3? And then I'll work it out for 100 grams. Well, I'm going to do that, and then we'll come back and look at the results.
Phew, we have finished the experiment. I've burnt five different types of food and I've got values for the amount of energy that has been released. Or we've got an indication anyway for how much has been released. Here is my final table and I'm going to show you this. So we had the starting temperatures, which was always 22 degrees. The final temperature, which as you can see, it went up by different amounts depending on the food. And there is our change in temperature. We got the mass, and then using that mass, I worked out how much it would have gone up by if we'd had 100 degrees. Now, it wouldn't actually have gone up by this amount, but we were just scaling it up to get a value. The higher the value, the more energy that food contains per gram or per 100 grams. And as you can see, the highest value here is for pasta. So according to our experiments, pasta contains the most energy out of these five foods. The next highest value would be marshmallows. Now we know they're very sugary, they do contain a lot of energy. The next one would be Weetabix. Weetabix is meant to contain energy, so that does make sense. Then crisps comes forth, and last of all, in our experiment, we had biscuits. They still give you energy, but much less than pasta. So as you can see, that's one way that you can get an indication for how much energy is in foods. If you did the experiment, well, maybe you get very different results depending how you do it, how well you did it, and how well you controlled those variables, those things that needed to be the same. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you do want to do an experiment like this, maybe we can arrange it in a lab for you to do at some point. Who knows? Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.